Gertrude Gorogosian is director of Regional Studies Center, uh, an independent think tank that's based in Yerevan. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Thank you, Francois. It's uh, the United States brokering talks last week. It's Charles Michel, the president of the European Council, who will sit down with the two leaders uh, on Saturday and, and Sunday, uh, next Sunday in Brussels. Isn't this Moscow's job? I would say no. Moscow has lost the diplomatic initiative simply because it has failed. Russia has failed to uphold the terms of the fragile ceasefire, and the West has responded to the vacuum. Russia is also overwhelmed by its failed invasion of Ukraine. But I am very optimistic and hopeful that European and American engagement will actually facilitate rather than mediate a resolution between Armenia and Azerbaijan. What, 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 explain to us that distinction. Oh, that's a big distinction, I would say. Much of the efficacy, the success of the Brussels track and the Washington meetings was the idea no longer to impose a mediated resolution, but rather to give agency to the leaders of Armenia and Azerbaijan to facilitate a post-war consensus on their own terms. This is why it's as much about countering the Azerbaijani siege of Nagorno-Karabakh, the military presence within Armenia proper by the Azerbaijani forces. But I do think that the Russian approach is generally to twist arms. The European approach is holding hands. And why is the time right? We heard upbeat remarks there by the U.S. Secretary of State. Well, I would say Washington, we witnessed a rare expenditure of diplomatic capital by the U.S. The Secretary of State oversaw four days of negotiations. This is rather unprecedented. It's not either a one-time, one-off event, nor just a photo opportunity. We also see beyond Sunday in Brussels, a June 1st meeting on opportunity for Armenia and Azerbaijan, joined by French President Macron and the German Chancellor at the June 1st summit of the European political community. And that'll be taking place in Moldova. Where can they reach agreement, the Armenians and the Azerbaijanis? Well, I would say there has been some progress in the restoration of trade and transport. The sticking point in many ways has been Azerbaijan's maximalist position. But I do think that diplomacy is the only way forward. There is no military solution. And I do think Azerbaijan will climb down and begin to de-escalate because they are in danger of becoming diplomatically isolated. And at this point in time, uh, what's the... When you talk about the maximalist position, what's the intention seen from Yerevan when it comes to the Lashin Corridor and the fact that uh, there, there's this roadblock, effectively a blockade that's been installed? Well, unfortunately, the siege of Nagorno-Karabakh, the blockage, the blockade, is only the latest in a rather more consistent escalation by Azerbaijan that includes cutting off gas, that includes cross-border incursions into Armenia. It's an expansion of the conflict. And I do think maximalist also refers to recent egregious territorial demands on Armenia from Azerbaijan well beyond Nagorno-Karabakh. Pronouncements by Russia's president regarding a, a, a greater Russia, is that a, a factor that maybe has pushed Azerbaijan to maybe reconsider its position when it comes to its war with Armenia? Well, I do think Azerbaijan's calculation is based much more on unprecedented direct Turkish support, much more than dealing with Russia. If anything, President Aliyev of Azerbaijan has been challenging the Kremlin, calling the bluff of Russia in this time of failed invasion of Ukraine. For Armenia, we face a similar challenge where Russia is an unreliable so-called partner. 
perhaps now part of the problem, not the solution. Where does this leave the 2,000 Russian peacekeepers that are in, uh, supposed to be in, in Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh? Well, unfortunately, that peacekeeping force has failed in its essential mission and mandate to enforce the ceasefire agreement, which demands unfettered access in and out. And unfortunately, the peacekeepers have, if not been complicit, have been shamefully, woefully inadequate to the task. This is why it's the European Union and the Americans that actually offer much more promise to a mediated solution. Richard Garagosian, one final question on this. Uh, how does Washington and Brussels uh, divvy up their, what are their respective roles? Actually, I would argue the American support is just that. It's secondary. It's actually designed to bolster European Union engagement because it's the European Union that has monitors deployed in Armenia proper. It's the EU that will ensure connectivity. It's much less an American direct engagement, but more to craft an environment more conducive to Western engagement. Richard Giragosia, many thanks for joining us from Yerevan. Thank you, Francois.